Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to see you. Would you please stand and let us sing our theme song, God is Good, all the time. God is good all the time. He's put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. All the time. Through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time. And you may be seated. We'll have some short songs today because I'm sure we're going to have the word today. The one sure. <laughs> June, are you going to cut your legs off? Uh, no. No. You said we're having short songs. Oh. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> uh, some of you know, but um, uh, Ed's Ed's brother passed away just in the last oh, few wow. days, and uh, so he was letting us know about that this morning. But uh, he, that I think he's in Davis, uh, and uh, looks like he passed away from a heart attack. So, but Ed, it was good to see Ed this morning and yes. see him here in church, and uh, yeah. good to see Raleigh back. Raleigh had a uh, back procedure done. Um, Last Monday. Monday. It was Monday because I think he said that it was supposed to last six days, and you know that six days is up. But he was he was toughing it out. So he and Janice were here this morning. All right, uh, let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for how you provide for us and how you take care of us. We pray for Ed, Lord, and the loss of a of a brother. Comfort him. Thank you for for Raleigh's improvement, Lord. May the may the painkillers that he's taking work, and may this offering, Lord, be spread. We thank you, Lord, for the message this morning, and, and knowing that we have a heartbeat, and that, Lord, you're in control, and we trust in you, believe in you. We know, Lord, that we're still being sanctified because we haven't been glorified and brought home yet. We trust you, Lord, and we're doing everything we can while we're here to support you as you work through us, because it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. That's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Oh, hell to sail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me, I 
by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side was flow. Turn it over to our pastor. All right. I like the, the line in that uh, uh, received a double cure uh, for all of our sins. There's a verse, I think it's in Isaiah 40, that says... Uh, to comfort Israel uh, because you have received from the Lord's hands double for all your sins. And isn't it a comfort to think that, you know, our sins just aren't barely paid for? I mean, Christ paid double. I mean, it's it, we, he, he has more than covered all of our sins by His great work in our behalf. And so that's a, I find that a... Uh, a great, a great encouragement because when our sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And we, he's, he's paid the devil. Okay, well, uh, tonight we have a very uh, fortuitous uh, topic uh, on the issue of perseverance, and it's on pages 61 to 65. If you have this, uh, our book, A Life in the Body of Christ. Uh, before we get into it, dare I ask if there's any questions about this morning? I don't. Uh, um, this morning was great. Uh, well, it's uh, it, it was a uh, it was a hard sermon to prepare and to to preach and uh, like I said, but providentially our topic tonight wasn't planned on it, but it kind of goes a lot a, along with it uh, just a, a little bit uh, on us uh, persevering in our faith and keeping on. Uh, and keeping on because essentially that's kind of what we were you know talking about that perseverance is is it is the life of the christian it is uh, we are to endure to the end and so this is uh this is kind of what that's uh, that's about and again if we want to 
delve into a little bit this this morning. Uh, uh, we can. There'll be plenty of opportunities because we're kind of talking right along aside it tonight. But uh, we'll start off with prayer and then we'll we'll jump into it. Uh, our Father, Lord, we uh, uh, we love you. We uh, thank you. We ask for the. Uh, forgiveness for our many sins we don't love you as we should and we love our sins uh, more than we should uh, encourage us uh, tonight in our faith not to uh, lose heart in well-doing uh, but to uh, but to endure to the very end of our faith and the salvation of our souls in Christ's name amen Okay, uh, if you got the book, pages 61 to 65, Perseverance, Keeping uh, keeping On, Keeping On. So, uh, and again, this is open for discussion. Um, so please jump in there if you want to you know, say something. And if I don't see you wanting to talk, let me know. So, uh, so I won't overlook it. Uh, anyway, he, he begins, the author begins with a couple of verses from both 1 Thessalonians uh, and 2 Thessalonians, and I'll just read them here from, from the book, and both of them have to do with uh, endurance and perseverance. The first one in 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, we always thank God for all of you mentioning you in our prayers, and we continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus. So in this one, he mentions the big three, faith, hope, and love. But with the, uh, in the arena of hope, he says that we have an endurance inspired by hope. Uh, that part of the, of the hope that we have as believers uh, should fuel uh, our endurance in the faith. Uh, then the other uh, verse from 2 Thessalonians 1 4, therefore, uh, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. So here, uh, this is the, the same church, both letters. He starts off both letters uh, referencing endurance, and here, a perseverance, a perseverance in the faith. Because what you know, one element of saving faith. The, 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 there's, there's lots of different kinds of faith, but saving faith perseveres. So saving faith endures to the end. Uh, other kinds of faith don't endure to the end, but saving faith always perseveres and endures to the end regardless of what happens. Um, uh, he mentions here in this one about uh, their perseverance and enduring persecutions and trials. Uh, so all the difficulties in life that they are going through, uh, a person who has saving faith is going to persevere through those. And I, I'm sure we've all had the experience and you see people and you know we all got stuff, we all go through stuff. Um, and, and you can kind of see when people go through hard times, what happens to their faith? You know, well, a person with saving faith, the, the trial of their faith and the trial of their life purifies their faith. And though it's a long, hard, rocky road, you know, falling down and going, it, it endures to the end. And other people have a kind of a faith that as soon as it hits a difficulty, they fall away. That is not saving faith because it does not persevere to the end. In fact, maybe we'll look at it here a little bit. Our Lord taught, taught a whole parable on that. There, there, there are different kinds. People respond to the gospel in different kinds of way, ways. And you might say in a lesser kinds of faith that aren't saving faith. And, and so they don't endure. And so this, this chapter on perseverance and endurance, I think, is, 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 uh, is just uh, very, very timely with what, we, uh, with, with what we talked about this morning. But those are the two verses uh, he's, he starts off with. And then he, he begins uh, kind of uh, enumerating a, a, a good thing that we ought to uh, contemplate, that there are two sides to the eternal security coin. 
Now, as Southern Baptist, I mean, I am a Southern Baptist by conviction. I, I revel in the doctrine of eternal security and once saved, always saved. And I mean, this is, this is it's, it's a tremendous thing that God, that God has given us. But there are two sides to that coin, and sometimes only one side is emphasized without giving any attention to the, to, to, to the, uh, to the other side of, of, of that coin. One side of that coin of, of eternal security is that God is the one that preserves us. Uh, God is the one that keeps us uh, to the end. He promises to never leave us and never to forsake us, uh, that he will love us eternally, that he gives us a kind of life that's eternal life. It's not a temporal life. It, it's all on him. I mean, he, he's the one that keeps us to the end. He preserves us. And so we we believe in eternal security because God says, I'm never going to let you go. Uh, was it the John 10, the 28 and 29? You're, you're in my father's hands. You're in my hands. No one can snatch you at you know, at out of my hand. And so that, that is one side of the eternal security coin that God is preserving us and keeping us to the end. Often we'll end our services. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I mean, God's the one keeping us, uh, you know, keeping us in the faith. But the other side of the coin that is, you know, that is, you might say, our part of the, that, that package is that as believers, we are to persevere. Uh, we have a responsibility to endure and to endure to the end. We have a, a God-given responsibility to never give up on the faith. We, we have to endure because a saving faith is an enduring faith, or as the guy titles this chapter, it's keeping on keeping on. And so that, that's our part, our responsibility in the equation of, um, of, 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 our, of, our, you know, of our eternal security. We have to keep on keeping on. That is the evidence that we actually have a saving kind of faith because temporary faith is not a saving kind of a faith. Uh, let, let me read here uh, on page 61. Uh, the last uh, sentence of the second uh, paragraph, just down there at the bottom. We must persevere to the end, um, and at the same time, we know that God will preserve all those who are truly His. Um, what is that? I think it's in uh, Philippians. Uh, uh, Oh, that uh, he, he who began a work in you will continue it until the, the, until the, the day of redemption. He begins it. He's going to continue it. Uh, but we're going to see we also have to continue in the faith. That, that, that's the evidence that he's continuing his work in us is that we will endure to the very end of our faith. And so he, he, both sides of this coin are, are, uh, are essential uh, for the doctrine of our eternal security. Now, by way of application, and I kind of skirted this issue this morning, which side of the coin gets emphasized in our SBC tradition? God's government. Yeah, yeah. You're. I mean, never question your salvation. If you made that one-time decision one time long ago, then you're in like Flynn. You just don't. You know. Uh, you know. Won't, you know. Uh, just it's it's it's, it's once saved, always saved. And there, there's never. A, what the scripture says, well, test yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Don't you know that you're in Christ Jesus? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I mean, there is, yes, God preserves us, but, but there's not a lot of emphasis on we have to persevere in our faith. Uh, and I do think that's a tremendous danger, oftentimes, in the way we do evangelism, because it's just getting the number on the, you know, the number and the name on the roll, get them in the water, you know, and then you leave them. And it's just like, well, well now that's not where it ends. That's just where it begins. Uh, and if your only assurance of your salvation is a one-time decision, I would say that's not salvation, you know, or that is not the, a, a biblical kind of salvation. And that's why I think sermons like this morning um, 
I, I, you know, at least from what I hear, are, do seem to be very rare and seem out of place. It, it, it felt awkward to say it. It just, it, because it's not very common to hear the other side of that coin that is very, very uh, necessary. Because we, we rarely stress our responsibility to grow and to endure in the faith. It's just God's got you. You're 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 in. You're you know. Don't ever worry about it. If you sign that card long, you, you you know. Don't worry about it. Well, the Bible says to worry about it. We are to test ourselves. We're to make our calling and election sure. We're you know. This is part of the process, and a big part of the process is: Am I enduring? Am I persevering in hope and in faith and through every trial and you know and and and, and, and temptation. Uh, and so I, just by way of a warning, just because of the atmosphere of kind of our own tra tradition, we rarely stress our responsibility or a believer's responsibility to grow, to endure, to persevere. It's always recommended as a good option. Hope it happens, but it's, it's an option. Uh, and I'm going to say that's a lie. Uh, because perseverance is a prerequisite for assurance. Okay. I love the doctrine of assurance of salvation and we ought to we ought to uh, you know hold it and take great comfort in it. But perseverance is a prerequisite for assurance. And as a pastor, I would never give anyone assurance of salvation if they're living in open sin. I would never, you'd never do it because they're not persevering in the faith. Now, maybe they'll come back and maybe they're at a low point, you know, I don't know. But you would never, I would never give them assurance of salvation. And because if their only assurance is what happened 20 years ago and not is the Holy Spirit, you know, growing me right now, then, then, then there's, there's no assurance because there's no perseverance. Perseverance is a prerequisite for assurance. And that's kind of what he's uh, he, he, kind of what he, he's getting into. This kind of goes with what we talked about this morning. Uh, but one of the things that really got me that was uh, encouraging to me was that perseverance um, as a corporate call. That is, it's to all of us in the church. I, for, for me, I've always internalized this and individualized this. Let, let me just read something here on page 62. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, this uh, first sentence in the first full paragraph, about a quarter of the way down on page 62. When we think about perseverance, our minds often jump to the Holy Spirit's inner work in our lives, enabling us to hang on to the faith. However, perseverance should also be thought of in the context of the members of the local church working together and persevering in their service, love, and devotion to one another. Uh, and then the very last sentence of that same paragraph, Paul addresses these church members about their responsibility to each other in the local congregation. Now, this, this, this part that he brings out here, personally, I, I, I found this a, a, an extremely helpful reminder because, as I mentioned, I tend to think of, of perseverance. This is something God is preserving me, and then I just kind of need to, you know, I'm head down and plow, and you just kind of go, you know, go through our faith. But what he's reminding us here as, as members of the church, that as, as a church member, and when we're in a, a body of believers, that this church group, we're all hitched together. And yes, we're to head down and plow in our faith, but we're all hooked to one another. And so we need to be encouraging one another to persevere in our faith because at times we're all going to struggle in our faith and we're going through a trial or a tribulation or a difficulty and struggling with this sin or whatever. And we need each other to encourage each other along to keep on keeping on. It's not just an individual I got to keep on keeping on, but it's June telling me, "Hey, keep on keeping on." You know, uh, you know, I don't want to go to church today. My wife, you got to go. Come on, let's go. You know, it's it's we we need to encourage each other in our faith, and I, so I found that just an extremely. Uh, 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 extremely uh, uh, beneficial point. In fact, let me just look at a couple of verses in uh, Hebrews. Hebrews uh, 3.6. 
uh, they'll be in he Hebrews 3 6. Let's see here. Now, this is a, a verse that just kind of mentions uh, enduring to the end. Uh, but Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are. If we hold fast our confidence and boast of our hope firm unto the end. And so who, who are in the household of God? Who are the true believers? Who are the... Well, it's, it's those who hold fast our confidence and hope firm to the end. You, you endure to the end. That's, that's the genuine believer. Uh, but then go down to verse 12 and 13, and he, uh, the author mentions of these. Take care, brethren, that none um, that there are, there not be any uh, any one of you uh, with an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And he, he points out that, yes, we we're to endure, endure to the end, and we all struggle with the temptation of unbelief. But he was, he's saying we need to encourage each other that we won't have this sinful heart of unbelief. And so within the body of believers, we should be encouraging each other to continue to believe and to endure. It's not just my, you know, in my own strength and doing it all by myself. Uh, it is actually all of us encouraging one another in our most holy faith. Uh, another one in Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 23 and 24. Um, uh, again, talking about perseverance. Let, let us hold fast to our confession uh, of our hope without wavering. We have a, a body of faith we believe in. We're to hold, hold fast to it. We're to have convictions. We're not to waver in it because he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. So again, we, we have, uh, this is what we believe, we're to encourage each other in our belief, and then we take the cattle prod when we see our fellow believers saying, hey, you, you, you're getting off the path here, either in your beliefs or in your love or your good works, or you, 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 know, you, you seem to be wandering a little bit, and so hey, let's, let's get back in line. And, and so, uh, again, this is, uh, you know, a, a part of the beauty of the body of Christ. We need each other to encourage each other, to help each other endure and persevere to the end. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I found it enlightening, uh, this point that he brings out, this corporate responsibility that we have is as a member of a local church uh, to the other members to help them endure. It's not just me enduring and keeping on keeping on, but we need to encourage each other to keep on keeping on and not to leave off our, leave off our, our Christian duties. Um, I've got a couple more verses on this. Y'all got any comment on, on that part? Um, well, yeah. My husband passed away. Uh, we've been coming here for over 11 months, but we weren't members. And there are several people in this congregation that supported me so greatly to keep me from losing faith. I didn't have anybody else. I mean, my son couldn't really help me as far as stay true. Uh, God, but they, they came aboard and really made me a close friend and helped me in, uh, in so many ways, helped me get through it. And it, just the faithfulness of the members. And this really greatly influenced two unsafe people in my family because they did that. So they said, that's the way Christians are supposed to act. And I just think, I just have to compliment this church. There's some people here that are really there when you need them. Well, it helped me to stay strong. Well, Ecclesiastes 4 talks about, you know, the, the benefit of friendship and, you know, if one falls, the other can pick him up. But it says, woe to that man who, when he falls, doesn't have anybody. You know, and so when we stumble in our faith in our sanctification process, and we all do, and we need we need each other to help pull each other up and say, "Come on, let's go, let's let's get up and let's finish the race." Um, and so that's the, the, that's uh, that thing. thanks for sharing sharing that. Uh, you know, the the guy started off with the, the scriptures from both First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, and he quoted verse 4, but in verse 3 of 2 Thessalonians 1, it says, um, 
we ought all to thank God for the brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love you have, and the love everyone of, of you has for each other is increasing. And then it references in four that their faith is increasing because of the persecutions and trials that they were enduring. And so when we watch somebody else go through something, like you were saying, Carol, it helps bolster our faith as we as we encourage others in yeah. their faith as well. And that's community. Yeah. And if you don't have community, it makes it really difficult to have somebody come alongside you. you know? And that's why it's so important to be vulnerable and let people in and to to be able to have somebody to come alongside you, you know, in your grief or whatever it is that you're going through. Yeah, we, we can be too individualistic in our faith, um, and our faith is individual, but, but we need each other, uh, and we need to, to, help, to help each other when it, we, somebody you know, falls or whatever. We just don't leave them. Um, in fact, let me read uh, the last two verses of the book of James, James 5, 19 and 20. My brethren, if any of you strays from the truth, and one turns him back... Uh, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So again, you know, you're in the church, you got a sheep, and a sheep is, is straying. What, you know, what, what's our responsibility? You know, they're not persevering in the faith. All right, well, you know, good riddance, whatever. You know, they're gone. Just let them wander. No, we're we're to go out and get them. Hey, you know, and at least try to bring them back in. Or remember, hey, you know, you're, it's a part of the faith. You need to continue in the faith. Um, a Jude verses 22 and 23 uh, says, "Have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some, have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh." Again, that, that, that's the church body looking out for each other and, and encouraging each other to persevere uh, and endure to the end. Um, Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Uh, Brethren, if any of you is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and therefore fulfill the law of Christ. I mean, that, that, this is the body of Christ in action. We're all to endure to the end of our faith, but I, I also have a responsibility, not just to my own life, but to, to look around, you know, are we all enduring? And if someone's getting off the path, then, then we're to restore them, you know, gently, and we are to help bear their burdens. Or as, as you mentioned, Carol, you know, we, we get in a tough spot, a low spot, and we, we, need, we need each other to uh, help us endure uh, and persevere to, uh, per per persevere to the very end. Um, there's a quote of his on page 63 here, uh, almost in the middle of the page. It's the last sentence of the first full paragraph. Um, he says, while I must keep on keeping on, I must help my brother or sister. Uh, to keep on keeping on. And I, I, I just, for me, that was one of the, the big parts that jumped out in, in this chapter and a, a broadening perspective of our responsibility to persevere to the end. And, uh, and you know, we, um, I, th I think we all, all need that. Ha have you ever heard of Latimer and Ridley? They're uh, a, a couple of uh, heroes in the faith. They will birth, they will, they were both burned at the stake at Oxford in England. Uh, I don't remember which which one of it was, but one of them was um, was really kind of thinking, you know, struggling whether he was going to hold to the faith or not, kind of going uh, 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 back and forth. Well, they uh, they bring him out to the stake. Uh, they 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 tie him up, getting ready to to uh, to burn. As they were chaining him to, to the stake, one of them said to the to the soldier when they were putting in the staples, "You, you better hammer it in hard because the flesh is going to have its way. You know, make sure I don't move here because I you know I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm going to want to." And then one of them said to the others, uh, 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 well, Let's see, it was uh, a Latimer that said to Ridley, 
be of good comfort, Master Ridley, and play the man, because uh, this day we shall light such a candle uh, in England that by God's grace I trust will never die out. So here are these two guys. They're, they're, they're tied to the stake, about to be burned for their faith. And one guy, you know, I, I mean, that, that would be a hard thing to do. And the other one would say, okay, we, we, we got to play the man. You, you know, we're in this together. And uh, uh, in fact, I think they, they, they said you know, earlier to him, you know, our, our God can save us from this, kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and, you know, and Abednego, or he'll give us the, 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 the strength to endure it one, one way or another. And, and they were encouraging each other as the flames were lit. Um, in fact, uh, uh, one of them died rather quickly. Uh, the other one, they piled so much wood around him, it just kind of burned at the bottom. And it was recorded that just his lower portions were burning off. And he was in such a pain. I, did you ever see the, the, the movie, in the movie Star Wars with Anakin, you know, when he turns bad and he's in the flame, you know, all the, and he, he gets all burned up. That, that, that's kind of what, what I, I th think of as, as Ridley. And the, his lower portions were just burning off. And, and, and imagine the, uh, the excruciating persecution and pain that he was going through, but to endure to the end, and then eventually they, they, they moved the wood and the flames came up and set off the gunpowder around his, 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 his neck and it was over. But, but they were encouraging each other in their faith, to the very end of their faith, even in the midst of being burned at the stake for their faith. Uh, and I think they were being burned for their position in the Lord's Supper uh, uh, was uh, usually why a lot of those guys were, were you know, were being burned. But, but we need each other, you know, to endure to the very end of, of our faith. Last week we were talking about books. Uh, one of the places where that's uh, listed, if you have Fox's Book of Martyrs, the account of uh, Latimer and Ridley is, uh, is, is in that book, but it's pretty good. Um, Let's see, anything else in, in the book? We'll look at some of these questions here at the end and then some verses on application. But anything y'all want to discuss or before we get to these application questions? Just on um, our perseverance. It's at the bottom of page 62, and he said, therefore, my brother's perseverance is partly my obligation. That put it in a different light. I mean, I, I feel that way with our kids. But to come alongside other believers, you know, and that it just kind of opened my eyes to... Yeah, that would, and even you take that to the top of page sixty-three. Partly my brother, partly my brother's perseverance. Therefore, my brother's perseverance is partly my obligation. Certainly, the prime responsibility rests with him, and the power to preserve comes from the sovereign spirit. Yet I must play a role in his perseverance. You know, and so you know, Latimer played a role in Ridley's perseverance as he you know was being burned at the stake um, and so we should all play a role in each other's perseverance in our faith um, yeah th th thanks babe for mentioning that well on page 64 uh, you got these application questions for both individuals uh, I'll leave the questions for individuals for individuals because I don't know if it would be appropriate to discuss uh, them here, and then one, it would be much too extensive. Um, but I'll just uh, leave that to you, because um, it asks a very personal thing on whether you're persevering in the life of the church and about other people in the church. But, uh, but anyway, these, uh, these questions for groups. Um, at the bottom of page 64, the first one, suggest and discuss other verses that talk about a believer's perseverance. Um, Y'all got any, any, any verses? I got a, a little list here, verses about, about perseverance and our need for perseverance. Um, Hebrews 10, 25, you got right up to it a while ago. Yeah, I didn't read what, so what is it? Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the habit of some is, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day of 
Yeah, that's a uh, and today is approaching. Yeah, every day is approaching. Yeah, he, in fact, he lets in the bullet points on the thing before. He, he talked about perseverance and our commitment to the body, uh, faithful attendance, uh, different different things. But that's the, you know that is a very practical way to uh, to, to persevere and to endure. Um, one of the ones I have a uh, First Corinthians fifteen two uh, talks about the gospel by which we're saved by uh, by which you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I pre- preach to you, unless you believed in vain. You see, a lot of people hear the gospel, and they, quote, believe the gospel, but they believe in vain. That is, their belief, their faith, is not a saving faith because they don't hold fast to the word. They, they, they waver in it. They don't endure to the end. Um, um, uh, Jesus said in John 8, 31. Um, let's see. John 8, 31. Another good verse on perseverance. Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, uh, if you continue in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. So you got all these people that, that believed in him. They answered the altar call. And he says, you, you're really my disciple uh, if you continue in my word. You know, if, if, if you leave off my word, then you're not really my, you know, you're not really my, my, uh, my disciple. In fact, at the end of John chapter 2, it said that, uh, uh, that was the exact uh, account, but after his healing or teaching or something, it says many of them believed in Jesus. But it says Jesus would not entrust himself to them, or he would same the same word. He would not believe them because he knew what was in them, and so that they, they they had a belief, but it, it it didn't last. And you know that's so common. People have a quote belief that doesn't last, and that kind of belief is not a saving belief if it doesn't have perseverance. Why do you think it doesn't last? Huh? Why do you think it doesn't last? Um, that parable that you talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, in uh, Matthew chapter 13, there, there, Jesus gave a parable of, of the soils. You know, the word comes, the word falls on the on the roadside, and the birds come pick it up. They just don't even care what they hear. But but some it falls on the rocky places, and they hear, and at once they receive it with joy, and oh, this is great. But then I think it says, but persecution or tribulation or difficulties come because of the word, and it quickly withers away. The, the 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 trials in life, you know. I mean, you you know, see, kid, kids go to Falls Creek and oh yeah, great, you know, and then they have to live out their faith in, in school and it fizzles and done. No, it, it, it's not real, and and that's very very common. I mean, and you know, and I think as the church we have to be wary of giving false assurance to people that might have a temporary faith um, you know because uh, it, it would be a terrible thing for people to have an assurance of salvation when they have no real faith if they're not enduring to the end uh, but anyway that, 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 that's in Matthew 13 yeah I was reading in Exodus 22 this morning and I think you could make some interesting applications from that I mean it's not directly addressing perseverance but you have the whole incident of the golden calf where the people are like, you know what? This doesn't seem like a great plan anymore. We need plan B. Aaron kind of falls off the train. And then Moses intercedes multiple times trying to encourage Aaron to you know, get his act together to go and intercede with God and you know, try to prevent the destruction of the people. Yes, they fell, they stumbled, but help them like there's this whole cycle that I think we go through similarly in our Christian walk. Yeah. Someone falls, well, what do you do about it? Yeah, and 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 it's not that the the Christian doesn't struggle with sin and doesn't fall. And I mean, you skin down, you fall down, you skin your knee, you you know, we all screw up. But then, do, do we get back up and do we keep going? I mean, it, it's the progress of the Christian faith. Those that go along for a short bit and fall and never give up and never endure to the end, they're just giving evidence that they don't have the real, the real deal. Um, 
And at those, sometimes at those low times, I mean, just by for my own personal testimony, at, at, at low times and difficult times when I'm really struggling and, you know, and then I maybe question my own salvation. And that's the time we are to test ourselves. And then, you know, I, I, I look back over, you know, 35, 40 years, almost 40 years of being a faith. And so, like, man, I, I'm still believing. Why am I still believing? You know, well, because God's preserving me, and He's, you know, and so there's there's this evidence over a over an entire lifetime of God not letting me go, and I don't get any of the credit for it, but He He didn't let me go, um, and so that you know that's part of the process, and so that's the a crucial element of perseverance. In fact, let me read at the in Matthew 24. This is another good one. Matthew 24, 10 to 13. At that time, many will fall away and betray each other and hate each other. You know, the, the Bible is very clear. It talks about there is a great apostasy coming among the visible church. Among those that name the name of Christ, there is going to be a tremendous falling away. Many are going to fall away from the faith. It, it, it's going to happen. We might as well, you know, prepare for it. I mean, especially if it's our generation. Many false prophets will arise and will deceive many because lawlessness will increase. Most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And so here you have, you know, the, all of you know, Christianity worldwide. And then there's a great apostasy, and most of them chunk the faith. They, they, they don't make it to the end. They fall away. They betray. They hate each other. But it's only those that endure to the end that will be saved. Um, Galatians 6, 9, we're, we're, we're not to lose heart in well-doing. You know, we're, we, we keep on keeping on. Um, I see there's, there's, uh, there, there's a lot of verses uh, dealing, dealing with that. Most Christians don't want struggle. All of them. Of course not. Yeah, the, the, there are a, 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 a lot of there are a lot of fair weather Christians, and and that's the you know the, the Matthew thirteen and the parable of the soils. Well, the the fair weather Christians, hey, the uh, God will send the storms, and He will test your faith. I mean, y'all are going through James, right? And the, you know, and the the, the trial of our faith, and it, we come out as as gold. Those trials. You know, actually serve to give us assurance. You know, when you can go through a, a, a difficulty and, a, you know, a spouse died, you know, and your faith is, is you know, is, is, is tested and, and yet you come out on the other side still believing, that in itself is like, hey, God is working in me because I didn't chunk the faith. Because we can all name tons of people that as soon as they go through the trial, they chunk the faith, right? I mean, that, I mean, that, the, the, the church has been full of that. They go along gangbusters for just a little bit. But as, yeah, but as soon as the trial comes, the faith goes out the door. And that trial, that test of their faith, shows that their faith is suspect, at, uh, you know, uh, you know, is, is suspect at the very least. Now they may fall, and they may, you know, may, you know, may come back if they persevere. But the longer they stay away, the more evidence they're giving that they don't have the real deal. Um, anyway, uh, this will kind of segue into this, this second uh, question for groups. It's clear in Scripture that the true child of God will not totally fall away, yet some professing believers do so. How should we view fellow church members who do not seem to persevere in the faith, and what actions should the church take? Okay, th 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 this is common. You know, I mean, our church roles, I'm sure, are, are you know, are, are, are full of this. Well, how, how do we view these people that aren't persevering? Well, go to 1 John 2.19. Uh, 1 John 2.19, I think, is a good verse on this. 1 John 2.19. Somebody want to... The one I was thinking of, actually. Okay, well, you got it. Read it. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay. 
So here you have people that were part of the church and then they they, they left the church. Now he's not talking about someone going to another uh, you know another church, but they were part of the faith, and then they're just like forget it. They were part of part of us, but then they went out from us. And the apostle says, well, them going out from us, them falling away and leaving and not persevering to the end, that's evidence that they were never a part of us. They, 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 they were never the genuine article. Because the genuine article always perseveres to the end. It, it, it's only those that endure to the end that, that are saved. And yet you've seen pastors who left. Just because a guy is behind the pulpit doesn't mean he's redeemed. Yeah. Uh, what, I mean, how much of this is based on fear that they leave? What do you mean? Fear of what? Fear of dying. I mean, if you're in a situation where your fear has a powerful role on. I don't know if I understand. Okay. If you, I mean, no, just uh, I mean, there, there's, there's, like there's these, there's, these guys that you mentioned about fire and being burned, and, you know, or to. Uh, Lived. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure there had to be so much fear involved in that, and yet the the, the Lord gave them the, the the courage at the courage at the moment. A lot of them did recant, and I don't remember if that that that's account that account, but I think maybe one of those guys did recant and then came back, you know, and he recanted his recantation and says, "No, I'm standing with the truth." Um, but you know, we've all felt that that waver, you know. I mean, there's. I mean, I, I've, I mean, I felt that temptation, you know, this week in my own life. I said, do I really want to say this? There's a, there's a, there's a fear of. Do, I think this is what it says, and I've got a responsibility to, to, to say it, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, am I going to persevere? And we, we, you know, we we have that all the time in our in our faith, and so we need to encourage one another, even when we do fall off, and we all do. I mean, it's you know, we don't believe in perfectionism to where we're saved and then we're we're somehow perfect. We won't be perfect till we get to heaven, but there is a progress in the faith, and when we fall down in the faith, the Holy Spirit won't let us stay down. He's going to kick us back up, and we're going to get up and keep going. Um, of the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yeah. And perfect love casts out all fear. When we know that he, he loves us, that will give us a, a courage. You, you read some of the testimonies of the accounts of the martyrs. and I mean, they, they had a sure hope of heaven, you know. Um, in fact, here in, in, in a few weeks, I may read the account of, a, I think it's John Rogers. And the, before he was burned at the stake, the essentially the poem, the note that he wrote to his gaggle of kids. I forget he had ten kids or, or, or whatever. But he his sure hope of the faith, you know, and yeah, I'm going to be burned in the fire, And but he was, he had a sure hope of the faith that he was passing on to his kids. And, uh, you know, and the... Don't you agree that it's one thing to read this book when the actual chest cup, that's a real, that's a real, that's a whole different poem. Well, sure, but it's also the point of a test. Yeah. And and you know, in, in our test, you know, in in our age right now, they're not burning us at the stake, right. but they will call us names. They will, you know, we're not accepted in you know in, in you know in, in, in society. Uh, you know, we are we going to be okay with that? You know, to stand up for the truth, even though society hates us. Um, and, you know, hates what we, we, you know, to we stand for. If you don't go along with, you know, with the rainbow cult, to stand up for biblical marriage, you know, to, you know, to say that, that marriage is to be honored by all and the marriage bed kept undefiled because fornicators and adulterers God will judge in Hebrews 13. That's just a, a basic Christian. To say that in, in, in society, you will be ridiculed as a bigot. But, you know, that, 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 that's our trial. And, and it, is a, it is a trial. And are we going to persevere to that or are we going to cave? Um, I think we're going to all have the opportunity to experience that we, we, in the we, near we, future. We could. Um, Show our colors. Let me read uh, uh, Hebrews 10, 38 and 39. By my righteous, 
uh, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering of the soul. So God says, if we shrink back, if we don't don't endure to the end, he he will not take he, you know he will uh, not take pleasure in us. In fact, Timothy it says, if we deny him, he will deny us. You know Jesus said the same thing. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my Father. I'll say I never knew you. You know, uh, but he says, but we're not of those that shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering of the, of, the, of the soul. There's a lot in churchianity that shrink back. They don't endure, but uh, we are called to endure and to persevere to the end and to encourage each other to persevere to the end when we, sh when we see them struggling. And when I struggle, I need someone to encourage me, you know, in, you know, in the faith. And I guess this last week, or in fact, the last few, I've really been struggling. I needed my wife. I got a text today. I, I needed those. You know, because we all struggle, but we need each other to help us keep on keeping on. Um, I think the key to that, too, is, is if you're struggling, you need to tell somebody. Yeah. I mean, they can't help you and hold you up if, you, if they don't know yeah. what you're at Yeah. And I'm bad about that I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm so individual, personal, private. You know, hey, I got my stuff, but you just keep, you know, everybody stays an arm distance away. Aren't we all... When it comes to that, pretty private, we don't want anyone else to know that we're struggling. But if you want, if you want help and you want some support, you have to let us know. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But the fact is, we don't want anyone else to know that we're struggling. Yeah. Because that's Satan's. I mean, yeah, when yeah, you're like the yourself. preacher, we don't want anyone else to know we're having some doubts. But we know I mean, you. that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still a fact. Sometimes you need some encouragement. And Tim's already said, everybody at times needs some encouragement. I think that's why in the scripture that we read earlier, it said daily we're to encourage one another. Yeah. Da yeah, that's I, I didn't pick that up, but yeah, daily. Yeah. Daily, encourage one another. Whether we know somebody's going through something or not, nine times out of ten, they are. You know, whether we know it or not, everybody's going through something because Satan is warring against us. Right. And so we are all going to have some sort of struggle. We may not know the specifics, but I think that's why daily encouragement and, you know, to, to daily be in prayer for each other. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we you know we need each other. We we have a responsibility for ourselves to persevere to the end, endure to the end. But also, I have some responsibility to to, to each other. I mean, we, we have it to each other to say, hey, you know, keep on keeping on. Don't give up the faith. Um, there was an Olympic runner in 1992 at the Barcelona Olympics. Eric Redmond. He pulled his hamstring in the 400. And he collapsed on the track. And his dad came right down out of the stands and picked him up and carried him yeah. along to the finish. And that's what this church has done for us. And, and that's what the church is supposed to do. Yeah. And, and, and pick each other up and carry us to the finish line. And that, you know, that, that's what we're to do. What, what, a, what a great, great illustration. Thanks for sharing that. I, I can remember that visually in my... In, in my head now thinking back to that you know somebody falls we have a responsibility hey let's go help them up and hey we're yoked together and let's let's get to the end let's get let's go um, instead of just uh, you know instead of just leaving the wandering sheep to, to wander off we got to go get them but. well we're about out of time anything else y'all want to add before we end <coughs> But we'll close with, uh, close with the word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you uh, for uh, the local body of believers. And the Lord, I pray that this uh, community of faith would uh, 
uh, be uh, bound to one another and uh, in our responsibility to encourage each other daily uh, as we each uh, grow and uh, uh, stumble uh, in our faith. And we rely on you to get us to the end of our faith, uh, the very salvation of our souls. In Christ's name, amen.